Well, good afternoon, everyone. Delighted you could join us for this uh, session, uh, this SEDMA session uh, with the, the sponsors from the Nashville conference. I'm delighted that CloudShare is with us today in the form of Lee, who's going to be doing most of the speaking, but I'm sure Naomi will get a word in once or twice throughout the meeting. So with that said, I will now hand over to Lee, I guess. Please take it away. So, Mike, thank you very much. Um, to everyone who's joined on the call live, thank you very much for making the time. This is, like I already mentioned, a slightly different format to the webinar as I normally do. So I hope we'll take advantage of whoever is on the call to be able to sort of get involved, ask questions. Um, and I will actually also be able to provide the ability for you to join the active class. This session is going to be a bit more of a hands-on demonstration versus a traditional slideshow slide and presentation. Um, but of course, we have a slideshow presentation as well to get through. Um, but I promise that we'll keep that um, pretty concise. And again, um, we also have a chat that is open. So if there's anything that you'd like to make mention of um, during the session as well, please drop it in the chat. Um, in the meantime, my name is Lee Berkman. I'm an account executive here at CloudShare, and I've been with the organization for six years. So my role in the company is ready to understand the business needs of you know, potential users of CloudShare and companies, how they would leverage a virtual um, platform um, to deliver IT solutions to their end users for their own software. And part and parcel of that is also being you know, aware of how it actually works practically. So part of what we'll go over today is discussing some of the benefits of how to, or not the benefits, but I guess the results will be the benefits, but how to deliver a successful virtual instructor to training and how to make sure that you're getting the most mileage out of the group that you are delivering to that's committed the time to actually have a, a, a training session and ready to make sure that the people that are receiving, but also the deliverables. So in other words, your trainers are also effective um, with the tools at hand. So thank you everyone again, pleasure to meet you. I'm sure we'll have some conversation. Naomi, if you wanna do a quick intro as well. Pretty much uh, said everything. I will say that um, uh, it's great to have everyone uh, um, you know, able to uh, ask questions during the session and not wait for the formal Q and A uh, section in the end. Just feel free to jump in. Um, what I think that would be best for us to cover, and this is the agenda that is uh, in this webinar, is to go over the um, the student experience first. Um, but of course, uh, review the uh, instructor experience. Um, which is uh, no less important from where we stand. And of course, that third um, element that makes a successful virtual um, instructor-led uh, uh, training session, the analytics. Uh, so we're gonna go over all of these um, uh, most important elements of the uh, um, instructor-led uh, uh, virtual sessions. And I think that, um, I think that it's great. Uh, it's a great idea Lee, to give uh, hands-on access to the people here if they want to, you know, Perfect. yeah, feel our class environment. So I already know one of our participants is quite familiar with CloudShare. They've had hands-on time with CloudShare. But as for the rest of the audience, feel free to tell us in the chat, unmute yourselves, if you've had any type of experience with virtual labs in any capacity, whether that be as a participant on a learner's end, um, somebody providing a hands-on lab to you, or delivering one yourself. Um, what we're going to go through is how to make sure that you're engaging with your end users as effectively as possible. And just some general points that I think of what your primary goals are and what we see our prospects doing successfully. So first and foremost, the time that you're making for your learners is that you're actually personalizing content specifically for them. And that can be in a number of different manners. That can obviously be the software itself, the data set defined in the software delivery and hands-on experience, um, but also even the, the additional sort of training materials and guides, um, whether that be branding, whether that be messaging to individuals, making sure that it's actually unique to each individual group, business, or whoever you're delivering to. 
engaging. I think it needs to be quite obvious. So a traditional type of training, I think you have so many capabilities of doing this, where that be sort of games or a unique way of presenting and obviously just your personality. But when things become two-dimensional behind a computer screen, how do you keep users engaged? Um, I think, you know, that very linear process of kind of where we're starting now of that PowerPoint, one, you know, um, non-bi-directional communication um, will be limiting, making sure that you're providing an experience to the user that they can actually get hands-on with and so on. The other part of making sure things are engaging for the user is ensuring that what they're actually going to be utilizing and getting hands-on with is a true real-world solution versus a um, sort of watered down version or limited version of what the actual or a walk through video or just like a limited few features exactly that so when we're saying real world solutions we're referring to your actual software solution in no other format than it being fully functional all all uh you know all the capabilities available right out the box and the user is having full access to it right away um, and again, I think I've mentioned that a number of times, ensuring that the user are actually being practical with it. Again, I'm going to encourage anyone who wants to raise their hand, ask questions or chime in to not be shy. Um, and then obviously, the major part of addressing all of these points here is ensuring that the people delivering this, because again, we're focusing on instructor-led training, virtual instructor-led training, ensuring that you're giving the, the instructors the tools to facilitate all those points for those engaging trainings. So we want to make sure that whatever technology the user is using, they have everything in one place. So ensuring that they don't have to access multiple tools and so on, easy to use instructor console. In other words, everything is in one place for them to see the user's environment, ensure that they're able to um, do whatever task is required in the class in one place. A platform that is going to be um, supporting larger groups, larger audiences, having the capability of having more than one instructor or facilitator in a virtual instructor-led training can be crucial. So having a platform that does that out the box as well is something really important. I'm obviously always going to be sort of focusing on stuff that we're able to showcase today as well. So any other features that you feel um, aren't being mentioned here, do bring them up. I'd love to kind of have that type of engagement as well. Um, Real-time attendance and analytics, something that I think is quite unique um, to certain platforms. Analytics is something that you're normally able to have raw data exported. But I think to be able to have more easy to interpret and customizable data specific to what your needs are and what your information is for, re for you know relevant information to stakeholders is crucial as well. And like I mentioned in the first point, being able to have a, you know all capabilities for a training class in one place is going to make the instructor experience so even so much easier, but as well as the students. So having a platform that provides not just the hands-on lab experience, but also in-app conferencing, replacing the need for an external tool like Zoom or um, Microsoft Teams. Some companies will be you know, forceful on using one of those tools, and that's great. But for the user group or organization that has restrictions on what tools they can use, having it baked in will save a lot of pain. Analytics, this is something that I'm going to actually go into in a bit lot more detail by actually showing it, um, being practical, and you'll help guide with regards to what you want to see. And these really are the sort of high-level topics I wanted to kind of outline before diving into a hands-on experience. So if there is no additional you know, or questions or anything like that, I'm going to get started with the platform itself. Great. So, Mac, I do see questions. Brilliant. I'm going to actually show you that in a moment. So thank you for bringing that up. Max had sent a message in the group here asking about has PDF reader or viewer being implemented in the meantime, um, as we discussed how documents can be viewed. So I will actually show how PDF can be hosted and viewed for an end user as well. Um, so we're trying to, again, highlight how effective a training platform can be for remote-based learning, virtual instructor-led training, 
and making sure that the entire experience from development, preparation, invitation, and access is all simplified and easy to do. So I'm going to start sort of at the end picture of things. What it looks like for a student to be able to get an invitation to a class, accessing their class, being hands on. And then we're going to step back into what an instructor sees and how they are able to manage the class. So we're starting off from a emailed invitation. And there's a number of different methods to be able to invite learners. But we're looking at right now a uh, method on, a, on an email invitation where a user will have a custom template. And you can customize this appropriately, pulling out all variables. But our student's name is Golden Retriever, for anyone who's wondering why Golden is there. The title of the training class in the subject and the body, letting the user know when the class will begin based on um, how I defined it as the admin and the instructor. And most importantly, the URL to this class. I have already opened up the URL itself. And it comes predefined with my login credentials as well. So one of the things that may be obvious, but I have to mention, is everything that we offer from CloudShare, and I think that would be a must for any lab provider you may choose, is that it is web-based. So we're able to provide a hands-on experience to users with simply a HTML5 web browser and internet connection. There's no proprietary software that needs to be installed, set up and configured, or even a browser extension. So again, ease of use for the user, um, I think is gonna be your first point of call to ensure you have appropriate attendance and so on. The UI and the um, access to the environment is all baked in one place again without any additional tools. Right now, I've logged in as a student. My name is Golden Retriever, and I have access to a virtual experience that consists of four different virtual machines. So we're providing a platform for virtualization. However, you can also have just pure hosted web applications where instead of an operating system, we simply direct a user to a web portal of your choice. Um, your own solution or something else. Now, the way this environment is configured as well, and if we decide to get technical, we can do that depending on the direction of the session and the time we'll you know, have. I can even show you how you have additional technical control of how these machines can communicate with one another. But by default, they're all on a local network for this individual user. And whether we have two students or 20 or 50 or 100 students, each learner will have the exact same uh, you know, replicated um, in, environment and experience, but will be completely unique to them. In other words, it won't interfere with one another. Now, additional to the actual software that you can have pre-installed and applications you can have pre-installed on these virtual machines, touching on what Max was asking a moment ago, you can have additional content and guides baked right into the platform and experience without directing the user anywhere else. All of the content on the left-hand side is what we call our, our content um, panel. And this is customizable from the titles, the names, and exactly what is in the resources here. So the first thing I have as an overview page is simply using rich text, and you can have this formatted and colored differently. You'll see a hyperlink over here to take me externally to a support page. And in the case of having, for example, a PDF, I can actually have a full document. This is a one page one that is purely a infographic, but I'm able to even have without going anywhere else or downloading anything, access to an entire PDF document, which could be a training guide and so on, versus having to have it installed or downloaded elsewhere. But it, we do have the capability of having more materials downloaded. Um, Max, you'll give me a quick, th nice. So we're able to basically insert and inject here any web hosted asset you have, which becomes really valuable if you already have a training program defined, built out materials um, already. You don't need to reinvent the wheel. You don't need to reinvest how you show it or distribute it, you simply bake it into CloudShare because we're just taking access of, again, web hosted assets. And to that tune, any other training materials you may have, such as video tutorials, guides, you can have baked straight into CloudShare. So here we're taking an iframe and baking in a um, YouTube tutorial on um, Photoshop for beginners.
So a user would be able to follow here, listening to audio. Don't think, I don't think you'll hear this guy's funny accent on the phone. I think he's Australian. Don't judge him. Yeah, perfect. Um, that was because of my screen sharing. But the audio comes through straight, loud and clear in my ears, where obviously the student would be able to follow along with what they need to do on their actual machine and software installed here. At any point, I can obviously pause and continue through additional resources. Now, these obviously I've selected specifically for a training demo purpose, um, but what's worth mentioning is any tools you have at your disposal want to introduce yourself, this is where you're able to go ahead and implement that. So I've chosen a platform and a tool called Class Marker. It's a public service unrelated to CloudShare. This can be anything from SurveyMonkey to Google Forms or any other tools you might have in-house um, and baked into, again, an iframe. ClassMarker is an online platform that allows you to have timed questionnaires and grading papers for learners. So the idea is students, again, will have access to all virtual machines to be able to complete tasks and be able to actually follow a set of defined questions and start answering them right off the bat while having full access to, again, the materials at hand. And by materials, I'm talking about software solutions of your choice. Um, the machines as well, by default, will have internet access. So if there's something that they need to do online or download resources or download um, installation packs for a specific piece of software, they can do that as well. Um, this tool as well, a baked in um, video resource that's available to the users, and they continue through here. Now, I know we're focusing, at least you know, for this session, we're focusing on instructor-led training, but in the case that we have a hybrid approach to the training where we may have a week-long session, but the instructors aren't necessarily available every single day of a training session, um, they might do the introduction, they might have a midweek check-in and then conclusion session at the end of the week. You may have a technical team available for your global student audience or potentially um, just having technical support members to help students when instructors aren't available. This is also very beneficial for when you have completely pure self-paced learning. So I would be able to go ahead, however my credentials would be, the demo at cloudshare.com, online learning. Hi. Okay, so right now I have no agents available, hence I'm filling out all the details. But the concept is if you have the tools available and you have the teams and resources, you can choose to embed that here as well. So where I may not have an instructor on the other side of my learning experience, I may have access to an additional team without having to go anywhere else, without even having to submit an email. I could just do that here. That's entirely up to the resources you have available and tools you wish to provide. Lastly, same as we saw the embedded PDF here, you may have some additional resources such as guides, marketing materials, or even online training, uh, you know, a timetable for your training courses that are coming up as well. Users are able to go ahead and download those materials straight from the same learning experience without having to go anywhere else. And the benefits of that is the fact that they would be able to go ahead and see that side by side, their actual live learning experience, while also at the end of this experience, when it expires, they'll still have whatever materials were downloaded on their local workstations. So these are the key assets on the left-hand side here for our content panel. There's some additional technical controls, such as choosing our um, network connection to the individual machines themselves. Uh, you'll see, for example, in a Linux machine, we have a um, SSH connection, we can have a console, and even an RDP connection to this operating system without having to, again, set up or install any additional tools. It's all baked in right here. Now, we also have some other options, such as if there are connectivity issues, you're able to try reconnect to a VM as an individual end user. And we can even run connectivity tests to ensure that there is no limited access to the cloud share infrastructure. And should you have some latency concerns, we'll even run a speed test. And based on any latency reviews, we'll give suggestions 
again, focusing on the student experience right now on how you can improve your performance. So users that may have latency concerns and issues, there will actually be a suggested change here to reduce the resolution of the virtual machine and improve performance. So you'll see here the speed test, we have a latency um, when it was done, we can run it again. And you'll see here recommended is to have this on high quality for the picture, uh, for the resolution. However, to focus on performance, should we have any type of issues, that little green tick wouldn't be as happy as it is, uh, we can actually refine that to improve the performance versus having higher quality and higher res. Keyboards, we're able to have virtual clipboards, virtual keyboards. So even for company countries that have um, users in different ge geographics with different keyboard layouts, you can go ahead and choose your physical keyboard input to match the virtual keyboard input. Oh, I should say that the other way around. Match your virtual keyboard input to match your actual physical um, hardware um, input. So you'll see the different types of English layouts here. And if you have other keyboards such as German. So Max, we haven't forgotten about you. Um, going through the rest of the UI, the user is able to see exactly what class they're participating in. And this is an essential part of both the user experience, but also the admin control of CloudShare, um, where you define at the beginning stage before this class even begun, how long a class will run for. There's a number of reasons why you would do this. The primary reasons are for um, reducing any type of distribution abuse of the environments. Um, so if you share a link with somebody, they can't just have this class running for weeks and months on end to just have friends, family, and other colleagues accessing a class if they shouldn't. This class is going to be available for a full day, and that's it. Um, if you have it for multiple days or a week, it'll state that here as well. And for the case of having longer classes that last maybe a week or two weeks, you might not want to provide unlimited access. So in that case, the runtime will actually be different to the end time of a class. So the delete and end time will normally be aligned. But if we have a five day class and we actually only expect or want students to have at least five hours of hands-on time a day, the user will have 25 hours of runtime over a five day period. And the reason for that is it helps control your active running costs, which is an essential, crucial part of how you manage virtual resources and um, you know materials in general. Um, and then the other part is obviously ensuring that when a class should be ended, we automatically delete and deprovision resources. Um, part and parcel again is cost, man uh, cost management, but the other end of that is also um, for security purposes. You don't just have resources available um, for an endless amount of time. And when an environment is deleted, it is deleted and non-recoverable, also very much an intentional mechanism. Now, one of the benefits of using virtual experiences is the fact that it's a virtual experience. So while you have the real world software installed on a solution, no harm, no foul to what's being, do being done to that software. Um, you can manipulate it, you can try hurt it. And should you go a little bit too far as an individual uh, contributor and learner, we can always revert the environment back to its original state so that you're at square one of your training. No harm, no foul. Um, nothing's been lost or affected. We just basically start at um, our starting blocks. We also provide a number of um, localization options as well. So all of our um, navigation um, available can be put into a local language. I'm now going to embarrass myself with my language skills, as English is the one that I'm good at. Um, please don't upset me and think that maybe it isn't, I'm so, that I'm not so good at it. Um, but you'll see now that all of the actual navigation is in the localized language of choice. Um, that includes everything from the hover over um, help tabs as well. I'm going to put that back in English for my own sake. But we have additional German, Japanese, um, basic Chinese, and uh, Spanish. This has always been done on um, request. So when we have clients that need other localization, that's when we introduce them. Now, to ensure that we have the best, not just, you know, um, hands-on software experience, but the best learning and classroom experience for both instructor and learner, the learners are able to communicate with the class in a number of ways. The first being communicating with our instructor. 
First of all, I can raise my hand to ask for help and get this, the instructor's attention. I can then actually go ahead and write to my instructor asking for help. Plus, I have the ability to actually participate in a class chat. Don't, oh, we do have San, uh, San Diego on here. And I just realized as well, it's early in San Diego, I think. So thanks for making the time. Um, but this is now where we're actually able to have all instructors and all students participate in one piece of communication. So for example, if there is a link to somewhere that's happening in real time or a query that should be um, distributed or a topic that's being shared with everyone, that is where this would happen. And the last part, which is something I'll open up from the instructor console, is having the ability to have audio and video baked in as well to the experience without having to go to any other tools. I've done a lot more talking than I'm used to in one straight go. So any questions, whether that be through the text, whether that be unmuting, um, feel free to make a noise. I'll make the noise um, and we'll stop once there are questions, of course. But I just want to say that everything that Lee has stated here goes back to the fact that our entire product is dedicated to support what we already know is best practices in training and knowledge retention. So we basically took all of that and built a product that is completely around um, really ensuring that our um, users are uh, not only seeing the information, but they are playing around with it. Um, they can feel it, they can break it, and they can start over again. Um, they can ask for help in real time. They can uh, review the content submitted in that content panel. And really every one of those uh, functionalities is here seamlessly uh, in order for the student to really be able to meet those expectations that Lee had described beforehand in that presentation about having a personalized experience, completely customized, completely hands-on, um, completely real-world scenario. Um, and, and that really circles back to our uh, play and break philosophy because we know from research uh, in real life, not just virtual life, um, that in order to ensure knowledge retention, um, trainers need to play around with the knowledge uh, to really kind of um, experience it and not just hear it or not just see it. Um, and that entire experience, uh, the student's experience uh, in the CloudTrip platform is built around that to support those um, strategies. And that's why they pay you the big bucks, Naomi. Nice. Um, thank you Any for... questions before we jump to the instructor experience? Feel free. I don't think we have a shy group. I'm pretty sure we'll have hands raised and uh, mics unmuted when necessary. Um, but thanks for All right. you know, I guess solidifying jump. the value. Perfect. So we've gone through a quick flow of an emailed invitation accessing the platform again all through a web browser and having access to a number of materials the actual virtual machines themselves with the software of your choice pre-installed all as a student experience we're going to go one step backwards now and view this entire learning experience and deliver deliverable from the view of an instructor and right at the first glance I'm able to see that I have six participants, including one instructor, and I can see that I've had five students invited, three of which are currently active. I can see that from the little um, colored tabs over here, as well as their actual preview screens over here. And I can see that two of my learners have never participated. I can also see a class chat that's happening. And over here, I have a assist me request. And obviously over here, I can also see that. I also know that one of my students ran a connectivity test, which could be quite interesting. And I would keep an eye on to maybe if I see a few people running connectivity tests, maybe there has been a performance issue. Um, and maybe we can try uh, with, again, changes in their resolution to improve that, which I can do on their behalf as well. With an individual learner reaching out to me, I'm able to go ahead and remove the assist me request. I can go ahead and open up the chat and say, um, whatever I may need to, to help facilitate their learning experience. 
Now, these thumbnails by default, and we can have a lot more, we can change how the view of these thumbnails are. So for bigger classes, I would really want to minimize that. I can have 10 thumbnails on a page right now, and I can even increase that further. Now, these thumbnails by default, every time I connect as an instructor, will refresh every, I believe it's 20 to 30 seconds. However, depending on the, my bandwidth available, I can actually change this into a live thumbnail. So I can see what my learners are doing in real time. Just making sure that I'm moving windows out the way so I'm not blocking things. Perfect. So over here now, whatever our, whatever our learners are doing is visible to me. Now, but again, the reason why it's not done by default is purely for bandwidth restrictions on certain machines, and we obviously don't know that. So the instructor would be able to do that accordingly as they see fit. But I think taking this one step further is when we have a learner that has reached out, like we had Golden Retriever ask us for help, um, we can actually go and take hands-on access and zoom into our students' experience. We refer to this as an over-the-shoulder view. Where's the French Bulldog student? <laughs> Max, I'm hoping you're going to share a video with us um, and introduce <laughs> Frenchy. Um, so now what we're able to see is actually exactly what um, Golden Retriever is doing in real time. So whatever the learner is doing. The instructor is able to see. Now, should the student run into a limit, um, a, a, you know, a limitation or um, a roadblock that they simply can't overcome, the instructor is actually able to go ahead, I'm on the wrong screen, is actually able to go ahead and enable input on the student's machine. So now, the instructor is taking like we refer to as over the shoulder view. This is bridging the gap between remote learning and face-to-face -face learning, and it happens seamlessly. Um, I should state that again, this is all happening live in a real class scheduled. Um, I'm just accessing from a number of different browsers as the student. Now, should we find that Golden Retriever has run into an issue or done something in a unique manner that is relevant to the rest of our class, we can actually enable that then as a teachable moment for everyone else. So we can choose to broadcast this with the rest of our class or to an individual student. So I'm gonna go ahead and broadcast this to the rest of the class, our entire class. And with that, the rest of our students will start getting a notification, letting them know the instructor has shared an environment with them. When we click okay, it will open up a new browser tab, which will be a shared session for Golden Retriever. So whatever Golden Retriever does now, is not only visible to the instructor, it's visible to the students as well. Now, why this is also gonna be valuable because being in a split screen for learners that have dual monitor setups or even like to do um, split um, screens, they can go ahead and break this off further to see their own virtual environment and see what the rest of the class, is, seeing what that shared student is doing. So. Even if the instructor, I hope I'm not going to inception here, but whatever the instructor is doing on the left-hand side, that is still going to be visible to our other class members. When our instructor decides that the teachable moment has come to an end and students should focus on their own environments again, put this here just for context, We can go ahead and stop sharing the machine. It will automatically close the shared tab that the students had access to, to bring their attention back to their own experience. So as the instructor, I can still see Golden Retriever's environment while I know it's not being shared with the rest of the class, and I can still continue to help and assist as needed. At any time, at any point in time, I can go ahead and disable input, close out this environment, and go back to managing my entire class. 
I also have the choice of zooming into multiple students at the same time. And if I am a instructor with a appropriate um, setup with multiple monitors or a very large monitor, I could even have a number of students in real time where I could have keyboard inputs in one or two students as well. Um, so there's a lot of control and options here. I also have the control as the instructor to spend an individual environment, uh, student's environment, should I know they've logged off for the day and I want to be resource um, effective by actually suspending manually or allowing the automated um, suspension mechanism to kick in. It's up to me. But more importantly, if I know that Golden Retriever had went ahead and misconfigured something because we took, key, you know, zoomed in over the shoulder, took some keyboard and mouse control, and it can't resolve an issue that's been generated, I can go ahead and revert it back to its original state without having to worry about the student having to do that process as well. And I can do that for a number of students as well. So if I've made learners go through a process and now um, want them to go grab a coffee, co cup of coffee in order to do the exercise again in a second methodology, I can go ahead and revert that back to everyone. Um, communication, class chat, I can communicate with everyone. Or alternatively, I can just communicate with my instructors as well. And as the instructor, I have access to provisioning my own environment. So I don't have to go into an le individual learner's environment. Um, and the last thing that we have that we kind of made sure we have all the tools available to our instructor is being able to actually broadcast audio and web and um, video capabilities as well for our learners. So. I'm able to go ahead and do that from this view over here. And I have two different broadcast modes. One is a conference mode where I'm able to have a session similar to what we have now. Everyone's able to put their cameras on. Everyone's able to use microphones. Or if I want to have a very focused deliver delivery without interruption, I would go ahead and choose a webinar mode. It'll ask me to choose my appropriates and can even get more inception here with a side camera. Not the most flattering, but it works. I definitely don't want more stuff in my ears. So let's do that. And now I'm going to be able to run a complete conference session where the students will immediately have this pop up, asking them the web browser to access their mic and cameras and to log in as, to join the conference as well. As the instructor, I'm able to go ahead and control this conference from this view here. I can have it as my pure focus. I'm going over my um, training console or far more valuable and practical, open it up in its own window. And now I almost have a dedicated conferencing app without having to, again, install anything um, or access any additional tools, credentials, and so on. I can choose to share my local desktop. I can choose to change from webinar mode to conference mode. I can choose the, I can view the participant that have uh, logged in, and I can obviously turn my camera on and off and my audio on and off as I see fit. At any time, I can stop broadcasting. It'll obviously close the window for the students as well, and I can pop that back into its place and hide it away. Analytics. This is a hasn't been a very active class. It's just for demonstration purposes, but without having to even leave the classroom, I can go ahead and see um, participation per day, should we have a multi-day class. So two days ago, I had actually provisioned this environment that had one of the learners log in, and I can see that I had one learner here. I can also see that today, I have three different environments running. I can see the domain of where the learner is logged in from. So if I was training um, classes to multiple um, companies, I could see all of that here, the, the actual participation per company. I can even see participation per country. Uh, I'm able to go student by student to see exactly what their engagement in the class has been. So I can see that um, this learner here has gone actually and sent a message to me and participated um, in one day um, with video conferencing capabilities. Uh, and if I go back to Golden Retriever, I have a lot more insight because Golden Retriever is logged in a bit more. So from day to day, the Golden Retriever is logged in over two days. I can even see the amount of time that was spent and where it was spent. So if we go back to the actual experience here, 
you'll see that all of these virtual machines have names, also completely customized and editable. So I'm able to, at a glance, see that on two days ago, uh, Golden Retriever actually spent 15 minutes in the Windows Server machine. I can see today that Golden Retriever spent 10 minutes in the Windows Server, uh, two minutes in the Linux machine, a little bit more time in the file server, and even more interestingly, what resources they viewed and for how long. How much time did they spend in the online test over how many days? All of this information is available on our analytics platform as well, but this is straight in class with me without having to be a analytics expert, getting quick visibility into who's done what. And should we have an instruct multi-instructor um, class, I can even see who's been active over which days. Before I go one step deeper into analytics, um, and obviously we'll open up the Q&A as well, Questions, comments? Uh, I'm not going to give such a big window. I'm pretty sure, again, you won't be shy. Um, yeah, you are a gentleman, Max. Absolute gentleman. So going, seeing that we've covered the student experience, the instructor control, let's go into post-training information insights. And part and parcel of, I think, being you know part of the training department is often having to share your information, your value delivered as a department, how effective you've been, and making sure that you can do that easily is, I think, so crucial in the process. Because as soon as I think pulling data is challenging, it's hard to communicate any type of valuable information. So the first of all, there's a wide variety of dashboards out the box, but I'm going to go ahead and just choose the ones that I think are relevant for the amount of time we have. An overall, overall training dashboard will show me the amount of training classes, the status of those classes, ones that are currently still running, ended, what type of training classes they were, classes over a monthly period. And I can actually define exactly the time frame I'm interested in. I can do this call, this queue, um, last queue. There's a number of different variables here that we can take advantage of. Um, let's go ahead here and choose instructor-led as well. And it will update all of my information in real time. If now I want to just see the self-paced training, I can also just choose to do that straight from the graphics, and it will update everything else as well. But let's look at all the trainings delivered over 12 months. We've had 300 trainings delivered. We can see by breakdown here the split between which has been more popular, self-paced or instructor-led. The total participants that have um, been involved in our trainings um, participation ratio, so from the amount of invitations sent to people participating, and so much other information as well. Um, which classes were the most popular with participation levels, um, blueprints, the actual environment that were delivered, and which of our instructors were supporting the most number of learners. We can go into more information about student engagement a little bit further as well. We can see over the course of whatever we've selected and additional filters exactly what type of time investment our students have had. We can see that a vast majority, and this makes a lot of sense being in a demo um, environment, that the majority of our participants have, have only been in a classroom for less than an hour. We can see that number, in, um, you know, slightly decrease further and further in time, making a lot of sense for demo training, uh, for demo environments, where the longer the class, the less the participation, or the fewer members that have participated for longer amount of times. We can see average particip participation time. We can see that over monthly splits. Now, this information might be really valuable to share with, again, relevant stakeholders, um, or just for your sort of ongoing reporting. So, we can choose to either download this information in sort of raw data, but I think more valuable is actually downloading this entire graph in a PDF format and choosing the formatting as we see fit. How much information we want per page, uh, whether we want titles involved, and now I'm able to export this straight into a PDF. Now, should I like this format and I want to get this regularly without having to go into my analytics, I can even subscribe to this being sent to me on a daily basis, weekly basis, monthly basis. I can choose to have it in an embedded email. I can choose to have it in a PDF editing the format I like it, and then saving that subscription 
I'm then able to automate the distribution of that to whoever this information is further relevant to. I made a brief mention of um, having visibility into company domains. So you might find it valuable, and again, we had customers request this, hence be introduced, being able to see which companies they're supporting and what sort of um, audience size per company we support. We do that by looking at their email domains, and we can see that CloudShare has clearly been the biggest participation. Well, we have some other participants as well. Now, all of this information, for example, would still be downloadable into a CSV file if you wish to kind of review that further. Um, but as mentioned, all of this data and graphs are then able to be downloaded and shared or saved as you need. I think a crucial part and something we always have to discuss is spend and making sure that you have cost um, visibility and assets um, to be able to, again, I think, focus on what investments you put into training, how much, tra how much training is generated for you if you are a revenue center. And here you can do that really, really well. You can see over a month-by-month -month basis what um, your hands-on experiences have cost you. You can see based on... Um, cost per class. You can even see cost per project. So this is really valuable if you have multiple teams, departments, or divisions delivering training. So you can see the cost between your European training team, your American training team, um, or perhaps even just technical training versus you know, uh, client training. You might have an employee boast uh, training program. Training per instructor, who's been the most effective and spending the you know, most resources on their environment. And then which blueprint has been the most engaged with? Uh, that doesn't make sense. Let's try. Here we go. Last year. Here we're able to see our entire cost spend. So this is all of virtual environments provisioned for training, development, sales enablement, and more. Yeah, I think we've come to the end of the actual practical demo. Um, and that I hope I've given some insights into how, you know, first of all, any platform you're looking and reviewing should, I think, cover these core fundamentals. I've had the opportunity to obviously, you know, showcase, I think, CloudShare at its best, where we're making class management easy. We're making the student experience easy to invite, to participate and join a classroom. And then as well, making sure that all the business data after your class deliveries is also something accessible and easy to utilize. Um, I think that- um, No, Amy, how did I do? Oh, you are awesome as always, sweetheart. I do want to say something more about the analytics. I think that um, the instructor's ability to open that, what used to be a black box, right? Um, or, you know, after the fact analytics and what we would call uh, business um, intelligence is today so much more than that. Because when an instructor can get into the in-class analytics and in real time, understand if, you know, what I'm using extreme terms right now, but if he's boring, or if, uh, you know, if they jumped through too many apps and they're, you know, losing their users while doing that, or if the, um, uh, uh, if, if, if uh, the instructor sees that the uh, students aren't uh, engaged enough with the specific assignment or whatever uh, the case may be, they can correct that in real time. And I think that is a game changer. Um, shifting from, you know, after the fact analytics to real time analytics and being able to optimize the experience while it is actually um, uh, um, going on, that is a real game changer. And it's something that our customers have long been waiting for. Um, and, uh, and so that's one of the things that we are most proud of uh, to provide to our audience. And what Lee is presenting now is some of the data that we've uh, collected throughout um, uh, 2020 and 2021 uh, based on our proprietary database, which shows the tangible and real impact that the functionality has on uh, training metrics and training ROI. And if we're seeing that the multi-instructor 
functionality enables more attendance, if it enables um, more uh, class completion rates, if we see that the video conferencing functionality um, um, makes the, uh, well, it, it pretty much enables us to stay in the same place rather than jumping through apps, which literally says, literally means students are, you know, not going to Facebook. They're not searching anything on Google right now. They are literally in class doing what they're supposed to do. And Naomi, That's amazing. if I can also make sure that like it's quite clear, you're ensuring that your students are getting more face time with the software that they need to learn how to use. That I think is the crucial deliver, delivery here in making Absolutely. sure video, and, and, and this is all from cloud share information. This is all our analytics with regards to what our users have and we can see participation rates. So a five day class where users only participate in one day, participate in two and a half days, three to four days and five days. Again, I'm using the five day number as an example, but it's, you know, proportionate. So we can literally see a huge increase in users coming on a daily basis when video conferencing is um, enabled. We can see a huge increase in users participating in multi-day, everyday classes when multi-instructors are available. Um, they did have more support. They know that they're going to have their needs addressed during day one, two, and three. Um, so Absolutely agree. Uh, what I am doing as we speak before Mike kicks us out is I am adding here to the chat a few of the resources that you can take a look at if you're interested later. Um, a few success stories, um, a brochure about the LMSs that we integrate with. Um, and I'm also, because I'm so kind, I'm also going to add the data report uh, that we were just talking about. Oh, nice. Um, so that you can take a look. We're going to issue uh, the 2023 data report soon enough. I hope that you uh, will gain access to that through either the uh, Sedma community or or um, or follow us, which is the better option, uh, Mike. Anything from your end before we wrap up? No, other than to say what a fabulous hour you've spent. I mean, uh, you know, it's all very well telling us what you're going to tell us and show us, but then actually to show us in such detail has been amazing. So I will certainly make sure that that gets packaged nicely so all the people who weren't able to make it this afternoon will be able to see it whenever they want to. So I'd really like to thank Lee and Naomi for a fabulous, well, I said hour, but it's been 50 minutes or whatever. It's been quite a, a good session, actually. And uh, thanks once again, guys. Sure thank thing. you so much. And to thank anyone so who is much. interested in learning more about Cloud Share, um, engaging with us and potentially getting into a demo or even, you know, learning more about what you're using today, comparing Cloud Share, please feel free to reach out to me. Being part of the customer facing team, my contact details are really simple, um, lee at cloudshare.com. So I'd love to hear from you. Uh, yeah, and uh, guys, make sure that if you want, you can follow us on Twitter, on LinkedIn and Facebook. Um, we produce content uh, all the time uh, to help you folks uh, do your jobs better, hopefully and easier. So uh, feel free to just follow us wherever. We're here for you. We really are. It's, uh, it's all for you.